All right, so we're gonna do a GDI demo. First things first, tank additive. Make sure you pour that in. Do that right now. The 878 kit, it's Fireball Plus. You could have Fireball, you could have Dragon Power, but the most common kit's the 878. So that part's done, that's easy. I'm gonna preset this to save some time. I disconnect the airflow sensor sometimes just to make it run a little better when I have all this taken off. It's not always gonna be necessary, but it helps with this one for sure. So the next step is the actual GDI cleaner, okay? We're gonna do this the same way we did the 063 kit. Then we're gonna spray in the throttle body and then clean with the, the rag. It's not real dirty because we've done it a bunch of times, but you'll see an improvement when we're all done. So open this up best you can, gently. If it doesn't want to go, don't force it. And this starts spraying. You'll see the black stuff start to come off. That's carbon. Okay, just get it nice and wet in there and then take a clean rag. Some guys use a toothbrush. And start wiping on the back. That little butterfly in the throttle body. Also, on the hone or the bore here, that's where a lot of that carbon builds up. We want to go in and wipe that out too. Okay, so that actually looks pretty good. A couple things in there, but... Some vehicles you want to avoid this centerpiece, the stem, all right? Because sometimes they're hollow. I know on Chrysler's they're hollow and there's little air vents inside of it and you can actually feed the product into the throttle, um, the idle air control motor, which opens this and closes this as you hit the gas pedal. So if that gets shorted out, it's not gonna go anywhere. You're gonna end up towing it. All right, so here's where things change from the old system. The old multi-port, We'd take this can. They always used to say, use the whole can, okay? But we never did, just until it got clean, and then we'd put it on the workbench and go on to the next step. Well, in this case, the next step, we're still using this can. We do need to start the car, so we'll do that. All right, so the pedal depressor already set up on the accelerator, which helps keep the RPMs up, 1,500 or better. Okay, right between 1500 to 2000 RPM. And then when we got some air movement, move the product around. So the next thing I'm gonna do is basically take this whole can and empty it into the front of that throttle box, all right? Now the can can go upside down or go vertical, or go sideways, sometimes sideways, it doesn't like it, but we'll start right here because we can see it. A little windy, so we'll go closer. Doesn't like it, so don't let it stall. Kind of spray what you got to spray. When it sounds like it's going to stall, you want to let off. Yep. Catch back off. So speaking of that, being GDI valve deposits are the main issue here. The old way, we could clean the back of the valve with gasoline. This gasoline in the air went right by that part of the valve as we ran the engine. The direct injection is no longer the case. The only thing going by it is air. So we have to go in for the air side with a product, in this case the GDI cleaner, to clean the back of the valve. So it's a two-step process, at least as far as the air side goes. One is this can right here, the GDI cleaner. It's real aggressive, it's going to go after the carbon, it's going to soften things up. When that's done, we'll go to that next step, the cylinder and the vacuum power liquid. We'll show that in a minute. Now the vacuum power liquid it's going to go right into the cylinder, straight up. No mixing with gasoline or anything like that. Pour the whole can in. It's about a 14 ounce fill. Air pressure. What type of air pressure do you want to have on your compressors or on this system? I mean, most shops are going to run between 100 and 100 and a half. You got a regulator. So we're going to dial it down on the regulator to about 30 okay. with the knob. All right, we're on shop air. Our regulator's turned down to zero. 
My valve's turned off on the back, all right? Here's your nozzle, all right? So you can manipulate this a little bit if you need to to fit certain applications. This one's really easy as far as access. They're not all gonna be this simple, but you've got that right here. So, got that where we want it. Open the tool. Raise your pressure. There we are. And you heard the engine start to slow down a little bit, which is expected. But you can see you got a real fine mist. It's real light. It's gonna get atomized through the intake, clean the plenum, clean the back of the valves. This is gonna finish what we started with the GDI cleaner, okay? So note your time. It's about three o'clock. 10 to 15 minutes, it should be done. I say that because, like I said before, some guys put this all back together and you won't be able to see the flow, all right? It could be leaking out where you don't want it to be if you don't have it that way. Right, it's not but visible. more so in this case if you have a general idea of when the service is going to be completed. Okay. okay. The other thing is you'll notice the RPMs will come back up because the engine's running better because it's not running rich. So again, we let this run for about 10, 15 minutes, okay? That's going to complete the job. At the end of the service, button everything back up. Very, very, very important that the vehicle gets driven post-service. A solid five minutes. And I don't mean stop and go, stop and go. I mean get it up on the highway, give it some RPM, give it some heat. In case any of the product loads up in the system. If, if it doesn't get driven, you run the risk of drivability problems. Okay. Uh, in some cases, even a no-start. I know in the winter time they're real sensitive if they don't get driven. All right, so we're about wrapped up. It's not flowing through the nozzle, so I'm going to pull the pedal depressor off the gas pedal to get the RPMs back down and we can start taking things apart. All right, so we're back at idle. That's fine. While I'm tearing things down here, I kind of like to let it do that. We're still going to have to drive it when we're done, like I said. It's really important that we get that done. But as far as the tool goes, we're all set with it. So we're back off the pressure. When you're doing this service, there's a possibility that you may throw a code in the engine, check engine light come on. Yeah, in this case, especially because I pulled the airflow sensor off, running the car with that off is going to turn the light on automatically. Okay. But doing the service by itself can turn it on as well. You can get a fuel system rich code, a misfire, a bunch of different things. Usually idle air control comes on, real common codes. Not a big deal, we just reset it when we're done. The tricky part, Remembering that if the car comes in for state inspection, a lot of times, in New York especially, they have to plug in and check the system for codes. Right. If the check engine light has been on recently, it's going to fail. So we want to make sure we do the inspection part of this first, okay. and then we can go on and do the rest of it. Uh, we don't want to screw up the customer. They're in for their inspection. We upsold the fuel service. Oh, by the way, now your car fails inspection. We want to decide something. It doesn't go over very well. No. Service is done. We'll get our equipment out of the way. This is all good. Cylinder's empty. We'll just shut it off and put it back together and drive it.